So I'm going over a quantity leadership problem, and in this case, there's going to be a marginal cost of production of $4 for both firms, and the industry demand is going to be the price of the industry is 100 minus 2 times the total quantity produced in the industry. So we set this up the way we always set up um, our maximization problems. We maximize by, by choosing our choice variable, and since this is price leadership or quantity leadership, we're going to use backwards induction and solve firm B's problem first. So let's start out with firm B's problem, and their choice variable is the quantity that firm B chooses. And we're going to maximize as usual price, which is the industry price times quantity that we produce, that's going to be our total revenue, minus the $4 per unit that it costs to create times the quantity we produce. And as usual, we plug in our demand function, so the demand is price equals all this stuff, so we're going to plug that in for our price to get um, a full form of our profit maximization problem. It's going to be 100 minus 2QA minus 2QB, that's just our demand function, which is equal to our price. So price times quantity for firm B. This is our total revenue now, price times quantity, minus our total production costs for QB. And you can simplify this down using algebra, and it's going to give you 96QB um, minus 2Q a q b minus 2 q b squared. And then now we've got our full profit maximization function and we can take our first order conditions to solve for the optimal level of q b. And we do that, we take the first order conditions of our payoff function with respect to q b as usual. And we get 96 minus 2 q a minus 4 q b equals zero. So when we solve that, we find that QB is equal to 24 minus one half QA. And this is going to be our best response function. And the best response function simply says um, whatever firm A does in round one, firm B can figure out what should they do by plugging firm A's quantity into this function and it'll tell them what's their optimal decision, what's their profit maximizing decision given that. So this is our best response function. Best response function. So we've done our first half of our oligopoly problem. We know how firm B will respond to firm A. Our next step is to work our way backwards and to look at firm A's maximization problem. And to do that, we're going to set up firm A's maximization problem, and it's actually going to look exactly the same as firm B's maximization problem, because this is a symmetric problem. So firm A will choose their quantity, quantity A, by um, maximizing the industry price, which is the same as it was before, it's just our demand function, times the quantity that firm A chooses, minus the total costs, which are $4 per unit, times the quantity that firm A chooses to produce. So this is now, we, we've now switched, um, just by switching the subscripts, we've, we've switched this into firm A's problem. And we need to move forth, uh, let's see. We need to move forth and solve it. And when we do solve it, we are going to solve it by plugging firm B's best response function in. We're going to plug this QB up into here. And when we do that, our profit maximization problem is only going to have QAs left in it. And they do this really because they, they know exactly how their competitor is going to respond. So they might as well anticipate that response when they're setting their own price, which is why they plug the best response function of firm B into their own maximization problem. This is kind of a way for firm A to bully firm B. Um, and as you might imagine, in quantity leadership, firm A is going to produce way more than firm B will end up producing. So let's just make that substitution by plugging this in. This can get a little bit boring, but um, I don't want to skip too many steps since this might be the first time that you've seen this. And let's use brackets here around this because we're going to plug it in using parentheses. 2 times 24 minus 1 half. QA. 
So once again, this is firm B's best response function. And then we have to finish our problem. This is price times quantity for firm A minus the total production costs for firm A, four dollars per unit times the number of units. So now that we have this, we can go ahead and solve the whole thing. And um, when you simplify the, the algebra here, that whole thing boil, actually boils down to something pretty simple, 48QA minus QA squared. So very simple, this is just solving down the algebra. And then you take your first order conditions as usual and take the partial derivative of the payoff function with respect to QA to get 48 minus 4QA, set your first order condition equal to zero. We've got a nice equation with only one unknown, and that's going to give us QA when we solve for that. The optimal QA is going to be 24, so we know how many units firm A will produce. So then we need to go back and figure out how many units will firm B produce. So to do that, we need to go find our best response function, and I'm going to erase this step up, up here and remind us what was our best response function a second ago when we found it. And at that time, we found that from B's best response function was that quantity B should be equal to 24 minus 1 half of quantity A. So if firm A should choose 24 to maximize their profit, then firm B is going to choose 24 minus 1 half of 24, 24 minus 12, and that, that's going to be equal to 12 units. So that we, we know that firm B will produce 12 units, and that's not too surprising that the, the leader in the industry is going to take up a bigger share of the market than the follower will. And now all we need to know is the price in the industry. And we find that, of course, by plugging our QA and QB into our demand function. So price equals 100 minus 2 times the total industry quantity, which is 24 minus 12. And so the price in this industry is actually going to, once you solve the algebra, be $28. And that was a fully solved uh, quantity leadership oligopoly problem.